That don't sound good. Let's check it out. Okay guys, so our trawling motor's been really irritating well, ever since we had it. it. It was working okay when we first got it, but then it just started losing power and uh, the thing never did want to back up. Um, the, uh, the prop's a little, got some dings in it, but that's not what concerns me. It's the noise this thing's making. Listen to this. Now I've had some trawling motors apart before. I've never had one of these particular ones. This is the Prowler. 55 pound thrust. So, I'm going to go ahead, and we're going to take this off here and see how this thing comes apart. I'm not sure. I hear something sounds like it's turning up inside of here. Now, I don't know why that would be, because this is the motor. The motor's not up there. That's just the controller, so I don't know. So, let's get you on the stand. Let me get that unhooked from the battery. Let's see what we can do with it, because tomorrow, I got the head in for this thing today. So tomorrow the gasket's supposed to be here, so we'll we'll get on that. Um, but right now, so I'm gonna get this going just in case we take this thing out on the water and something happens, then this thing can get us back. But sounds like the bearings are shot. But maybe if we grease it up good, that'll get us by a little bit until I can find parts for this or whatever. But anyway, let me get you on the stand. Alright, so back this up in the shade a little bit. Let's uh, see what's under here. It's a three bladed prop. Alright, it's cracked in there. Uh, my Minn Kota was a two blade. And I really liked it. But we let it go with the boat when we sold the boat. So the prop is definitely shot see a couple bolts down through here underneath this prop okay well let me get a screwdriver we're going to try to pry that off there it'll probably break but it's already broke inside there but i'm going to try not to break it anymore Okay, let's see what happens here. I think good. These things should just almost pretty much fall off once you take the nut off of it. And it's not one to come off. I don't see anything else holding it on. But I have to get it off of there. Because I have to get it off in order to get the get this motor part <sighs> yeah that's weird I can see the pin I'm wondering if somebody didn't maybe glue this on or there we go
Okay, so the pin is bent. I don't know why it was on there so tight, but yeah, that pin is definitely bent. I have to get a new pin, new prop. The props aren't aren't real expensive. But it's seen better days. I mean, you're going to hit stuff with it. So, now we got to try to get this pin out of here. Got to kind of straighten this. I know you're not supposed to do that, but, you know, sometimes <laughs> you don't have a choice. Bruno's getting his hair done. He's at the beauty parlor. He loves it. If you say vet, he loves to go to the vet. There's the pin. Just from hitting stuff, you know. I mean, it's going to happen. All right. Let me see. This will work, maybe, maybe not. <laughs> this one, we got it turning. Yeah, the other, I'll show you in the video, maybe tomorrow of the head how bad it's warped I think it may have been causing some issues running issues with it I did not run a compression test on it uh, didn't feel really feel I needed to I knew it had problems so I just went ahead and tore it down I wanted to rebuild it but Monkey's already antsy to get back on the water, so we'll put the head on it. Cylinder looks pretty good. <clears throat> Grab another screwdriver. I got one right here. I carry a little tiny some little tiny tools with me you never know there we go now these bolts here really worry me man when they get stuck you end up breaking them off Kind of like a starter motor. I may have to get a pair of vice grips and put on that or something. Man, this thing's long. This kind of stopped turning on me. I hate that. Okay, well, I'm gonna spray some PB Blaster on there. Cause now that it is loose, I can work it back and forth. It'll work this stuff through it. Usually when they're tight, and you got no way to get to the threads of any any way to get to the threads of the bolt or screw or whatever you're taking out. That stuff normally don't work, man, unless you let it set for weeks. You see them guys on them restore videos. Oh, I can't get it. And then it comes right free. That don't happen. But if you notice, the head of the bolt is always wet, but the threads aren't. That means the penetrating fluid can't get to it. Sometimes it can't. 
So I'm going to work this back and forth. I'll be back with you when I get this out. And then we'll take these bolts out and we'll go from there. Okay, guys, so I grabbed this nut driver. Hopefully that'll do it. These are stainless, it looks like. <clears throat> There's one. <clears throat> if I'd known it was going to be that easy, I would have just got my impact driver. But I didn't want to snap them off. I mean, it's not that big of a deal getting broken bolts out. They're just, they're a hassle. Okay, there's those. Now, and I pulled the <laughs> I pulled the brush end off first, of course. Wouldn't have it any other way, right? Well, them bushings don't look bad. Well, at least this one doesn't. Um, it's fairly clean inside there. Well, the vibration must have been just been them wires. So I'm not sure how this gets stuck down in here. Um, let me see. These wires are pretty tight because they run down through here and up into up in the shaft. So they might might have just been vibrating up in here. Um, I see a little bit of movement there, right here, but. I don't know why it's making that god awful noise unless it's just full of dirt. Um, okay, so I think I think what I'm going to do I'm going to put the top the top of it off up there up here. And see if I can get some room for the cables to come down. So I can um, so I can get those uh, get that bottom motor apart. Uh, this holds this on. Yeah, it just sounded like, you know, like an old weed eater sounds when you got the shaft running up through there. That's what it sounded like, and that's what was really confusing me. So, I'm guessing it was just the wires. I'm going to put me a little work on here. Oh, it doesn't matter. Okay. I don't have to mark that. I guess it was just the, just the wires that were... Uh, Maybe vibrating up through there. Does it have one heck of a vibration? This thing never was a real quiet motor. And of course not. So, I'm going to have to take it off here. Looks like a Phillips. And this one probably will not fit. Okay, let me go get a Phillips. Alright, so I took out two of the three bolts just to save you guys on that because nothing exciting about taking screws out okay so this these prowlers are um, 
they're they're sold in Bass Pro Shops, and they are expensive. Okay, so let's see what we got down in here. Sorry about the lighting, and you can't see much. <laughs> okay, let's uh. All right, see, here's the wires going down to the motor. So. Okay, they're marked. That's good. Blue, red, and yellow. All right, cool. So you can't mix them up, that's for sure. That's a good thing, right? There's that. I hope I can get this off of here. And the ground. That ground wire here. Well, I don't know if it's ground, it's black wire. Okay, now I'm gonna. Uh, let's just take this whole thing off of here. If we can, I might be able to get this out of the way, huh? I like that they use stainless. This wasn't stainless, but all these screws and stuff are stainless. Stainless steel uh, connectors. Yeah, that's cool. I just never did like this motor. Alright, we'll move this out of the way. I'm gonna shove these through here but I hate sometimes they shove the wires through and then put the connectors on you can't get them out this is not the case so and I don't mean just like trawling motors and stuff like that I mean other things so set this over here now we're gonna go back down here coming yeah they use stainless out here they didn't use stainless inside I still I see a steel couple steel rusted bolts there All right. She's gonna go get Bruno. He's done already. Just down at the end of the street. They said a couple hours, but that was fast. So, anyway, I don't see what would be causing. The whole, the whole armature is wanting to come out of this thing. I don't know why it won't just come out. Come on.
I don't know how much of this you're seeing, but I'm telling you what, this does not feel bad. I don't know why it'd be less the shaft is bent. That could be. Um, could be a bent shaft. That might be. I mean, I've run over some logs myself, but nothing. Nothing that would bend that pin or bend the shaft, especially. But it started to come up out of there, but then stop. I don't know why. Because of this. That's why. Alright. Got a little... little C-clip in there still all right. let's take the C-clip out Uh oh. I see springs and stuff jumping out. Not good. There's a washer. I know I've seen something else come out. Okay. There's a spring down in here. Okay, that came out of the. The spring came out of the. Uh, out of the brush it's not a big deal I think there might have been another washer that came out of it okay so I don't see I don't see what could have been making that thing do all that racket. That looks straight. I'm going to put a straight edge on it and check and see if there is a bend in this. Okay. <clears throat> you guys see the problem? It's nice and tight. Magnet come unglued. So what it was doing was it was in the wrong place. It was hitting. So I'm going to have to clean that out, get some epoxy, put that magnet back in there where it belongs. I'll bet you that's what happened. I think it was rubbing on here because the magnet might have been in the wrong spot. I don't know. I couldn't find a bend in the armature. Let me get this all cleaned up, guys. Okay, so when I was taking this out, I had noticed that magnet had been moved. But I wasn't positive. I couldn't really see that well. But see these rub marks? Those are from rubbing on that magnet. And it kind of screws, spirals its way down to the bottom. So that's why we had all that... Uh, all that noise so I'm gonna clean this up I'm gonna see I think I got some JB weld I'm gonna put get this sanded up and cleaned up I'm gonna put the magnum back in and we'll have to wait till tomorrow put it back together then we'll see we'll see what's going on with that so let me get this cleaned up some more I don't want to bore you with that 
just gonna run some sandpaper down in there get that get all that cleaned up same way with the magnet then we'll get it stuck in there hang tight guys okay guys so I couldn't find any of my uh, um, JB weld I did find this stuff and I don't know what it is and as you can tell this is why I don't know what it is I did translate that but all it did was give me the company information it didn't didn't say how long you got to wait or anything these are your instructions and that's it it's just it's a two-part some kind of epoxy or glue now that that magnet uh, I mean this is not the space shuttle it's just an old trawling motor so if anything I mean I know you know it'll run enough to get me back home if it slips again but so we're going to try this stuff this was stuff that her dad had oh okay cool it comes with a little mixer all right so let's go ahead and open these up i'll be surprised if this stuff's still good of course it usually won't dry up if it's not mixed but we'll see One is the uh, stuff and the other stuff is the hardener. So just like a, you know, just a two-part epoxy type thing like JB Weld is. I don't know how strong this stuff is. I know nothing about it. But I figured we'll give it a shot. I mean, it can't hurt, right? I mean it was running like it was before it was just like knocking and stuff so now this should once it gets on there it should smear out a little bit Now the problem is, when I go to put this in there, I've got to get it straight on there. So don't go up against the other magnet or I'm going to make a mess. Okay, so let's get you over here. Oops, just like that. I'm gonna try to get something in between them so they don't suck together and we'll see how long it takes to dry okay guys I just shut the camera off it's no kidding it hasn't been three minutes and I cannot move that so I'm gonna give it you know half an hour or so I'm gonna put it back together let's see what happens okay guys so I'm probably going to speed you up through this this part um, because it's going to take me a few minutes, I figure. <laughs> and so what, what I'm going to do, I'm going to put this down in here. I'm just going to try to pull these back. Just like that. Now, I'm not sure how I'm going to get. I just wanted to show you how I'm going to do that. So what I'm going to have to do, though, is I got to get the. Um, I've 
got to get my uh, washer on here. It's going to go in here. And then I'm going to, well, maybe I can put the clip on first. Just a C clip or an E clip. In fact, I see a little bend in this clip. Need to straighten it there a little bit. All right. Okay, so there's that. Give it a little extra. All right, now. We want to put our Hang on here. I'm going to try to get this back in here. Now I'm going to be speeding you up. Just like that. Now, I gotta put my ring on here. Now what I'm using for my rubber ring is Vaseline. I'm putting some Vaseline around there. It'll help seal it. Plus, it keeps it from drying out. Because you really want this to be as waterproofed as you can get it. So I did put some grease on that shaft and um, so that should help anything from getting down inside there hopefully okay so there's that um, I did straighten that pin out I'm still gonna have to get a pin now I'm gonna shove these wires up through here and I did the same thing on the bottom I cleaned it up real good put some Vaseline around here I got a little bit of grease in there. You can use Vaseline. I just stuck a little high temp grease in there. Now, I don't want that to get on the rubber. It'll swell that rubber up. Okay, so I'm gonna move you back here a little bit. And let's get this thing together. So, that space between the magnets is where the bolts your bolts are going to go down through okay so I can see right there where the, where it has to be so right about there so hopefully that'll stay on there for a minute which I doubt Now I'm probably going to have to get a fishing wire. I call them fishing wires, and they're not. What? You, <laughs> had somebody comment one time. I deleted the comment. You're not fishing yet. Or what was it? He said, "You're not fishing. You're working on." I don't know if he's being stupid on purpose or if he was just that stupid. But I just deleted it because I ain't got time in my life or something like that. Oh, it was the lights on the boat trailer. That's what it was when I said I got to fish these wires through here. Well, that doesn't even make sense. You can't fish from a boat trailer or something stupid like that, man. It was like, you've got to be kidding me. So hopefully these will come out up at the top. And they're kind of stuck. There we go. Yeah, they did. All right. So now, oh, shit. Well, you know what I should do? Let me take this back out and push it up through. So let me get this all back together the way it should be. I just put it up through. This stayed in. The armature stayed in, so 
Now I'm gonna get this up through here. Just like that. Now, we're gonna get our bolts. Got a little Vaseline on the end of the bolt. And you'll feel it drop in. And just get it started for right now. Make sure it's straight. Okay, that one's started. A little bit of Vaseline. And that one started. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. See it down there, want to pull up, see? So, I'm gonna go ahead and tighten this up. Then we're gonna go up, up top, and we'll put the controller back together. Okay guys, again, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward this because, well, there's nothing exciting going on here, so. Make sure I get everything where it's supposed to be. Get my handle on here. Okay, so I moved around here. Maybe a little better shot. This is as high as this tripod goes. We're almost done, so. Good, how are you? Pretty good, pretty good. I had to talk to everybody. I just did one of my last stops. I deliver for a local cattle company called Six Brothers. They do local beef. I do uh, chicken, seafood, pork, stuff like that too, but everybody loves us because of the local beef. Uh, I got some things I can get pretty silly with this countdown. Throw in some free stuff. Nah, I can't do anything right now. All right, now, when's a good time mm -hmm. to come check on you? Um, it's hard to say, man, just whenever you see me out. Okay, no worries. Next time I'm out this way, I'll stop by. Okay, bye. Bye. Okay, so this is back on. Um, I don't know why there's not a rubber seal around here, which I, 
you know, this is where all the electronics are, and I'm, you know, I'm thinking this is every bit as important as the motor down there, if not more, because this is where your electronics are, and um, these things are made, or well, supposedly made to get wet. They're going to be in the rain because diehard fishermen, they, they don't care if it rains or not. And you got all this water just laying down in here, just wanting to get inside of there. I'll put some stuff around there. I'm going to pull this off. And I think I got some glue over there that will glue this back on with. So, anyway, let me get this wiped down. And we'll put the prop back on it because I still got to put this plate on the bottom and I can't find my other screw I put down in here and they were together so I don't know I don't know what I did with it so anyway I can tell you guys found my other screw we're gonna put this on here And we're going to put the prop back on. Like I said, I straighten that screw or that the pin out. So hopefully, yeah, that must have been just the wires that went up through here. That was um, that was vibrating and rattling. It just sounded like a. It sounded like a weed eater, you know how you get that that vibration and rattle up inside there from that cable that runs down through there. That's what it was doing. And I knew there wasn't nothing up on top. I was like, why would there be something, you know? I mean, I just barely turned this and I felt it, you know, up in there, so. There's that. Now I'm gonna put put some of this Vaseline down around this thing. I know there has to be a seal in there or a snug fit, so hopefully this just will help keep the water out. It will repel it, I guess you can say. So now we we'll put our pin in. Nice and neat. Now we're going to drop our prop down. This, um, these notches right here is what the pin sets in. Just like that. Well, that thing feels smoother already. I'm going to put this on. I've seen guys tighten these things with uh, pliers and really raunch on it. You're not supposed to do that. Because that right there, it's not going to come off of there. So, this runs counterclockwise, so it helps keep it tight. All right, let me hook the cables up and let's see what happens. All right, guys, here we go. Oh, that's much quieter. I think that noise I'm hearing right there is the plastic from the prop. Oh, yeah. Nice. Yeah, I think that, yeah, there's a piece of plastic right here. I'm going to sand some of this plastic off, and then let's give it a shot. Okay, so, I just used my real fine grinder in there, and just kind of took some of these burrs off, too. And there were some burrs around there where I had to pry it off. Um, I know it's not going to be balanced, right, guys, but, you know, 
this is just temporary until I can get a until I get a new prop. I think I can get these at Walmart. I might try a two blade. Okay, let's try it and see what happens. There's reverse. Okay, there's all five in reverse. No, that was forward. Now let's do reverse. It's got three speeds in reverse. Alright. I'm I'm pretty happy with that. That is a lot quieter than we started, right? <laughs> wow, that's uh oh yeah, that's that's pretty smooth. Indeed. Okay guys, there we go. Okay, so there you go. That's how you uh fix, I guess, a prowler trawling motor 55 uh 55 pound thrust. Now I've, like I said, I've had trolling motors apart before, um, but I was usually able just to get by with, you know, cleaning the brushes and whatnot. Um, but I figured, what the heck? It's really just they're all pretty much the same, kinda, and it's pretty much the same as a starter motor. So I thought, well, I'll give it a shot. You know, I mean, it wasn't doing any good the way it was. I mean, last time we had it out, it was just. It was just vibrating the whole boat and I thought, you know, it wasn't doing any good that way. Couldn't use it that way. So I thought, well, you know, it can't be used regardless. So I really can't break it more. Well, you can, but I mean, it wasn't usable before. So I thought if something messes up, it's still not going to be usable. Or it, I can get lucky and I did. Um, but nothing to it. I mean that was that was an easy one actually it was pretty easy I like the way they got a lot of stainless uh, hardware in it and stuff like that uh, I just don't know why they don't have a rubber seal around that top that blue part is not a seal it's just a piece of plastic so I don't know why they they would uh, chintz on that because like I said the controllers up inside there you know so anyway guys thanks for watching I appreciate it uh, so hopefully I got, like I said, I got the head in for, for the uh, fast twin. So hopefully tomorrow the head gasket will come in. It's supposed to be in tomorrow, but when I check the tracking, it says it says it was shipped, but then when I track it, it still says it's there at the United States Post Office where it's coming from. But then again, through eBay, it says that it's that it'll be here tomorrow, arriving tomorrow. So. I don't know, the head was supposed to be in tomorrow, but it came today, so that's cool. Um, it's it's in great shape. Uh, so, I'll show you, like I said, I'll show you tomorrow how to tell if you got a warped head, and I think that was a lot of that problem with that engine. Um, I mean, I know it's got other issues, I'm sure, but that was one of the main ones. Um, so, uh, I, I already got the thermostat. I put it in, but I, I gotta take the cover the housing back off because when I took the housing off because it doesn't come with one so when I took the housing off they they had glued it on or something like that so one half stuck in one side and one half stuck on the other so the gasket kind of got and it's a pretty thick gasket because of the the uh, thermostats in there so I'm, I'm just gonna get some permatex I might have some I'll have to look and put around there because it doesn't really build up a lot of pressure like a car would so it's just got to keep water from leaking out so anyway guys again thanks for watching Shea Bear the Myth the Man Legend off for now don't forget to check out Monkey 1000 channel so uh, we'll see you guys in the next one have a great week and y'all be safe take care and bye bye guys That is a lot quieter than we started, right? <laughs> wow, that's uh Oh yeah, that's that's pretty smooth. Indeed.